I would like to invite Dr. Chandramani Sharma, sir, to start the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, hope I am audible. Yes, sir, audible. Okay. So uh, yesterday we discussed and uh, got started with the usage of uh, the Pandas library. And uh, today uh, we'll continue the discussion, but uh, we'll be talking about regression and classification and how the pandas library can fit uh, somewhere in between that you have data uh, you are doing some sort of pre-processing with it and uh, then you are training some machine learning models the regression and the classification <clears throat> okay so let me share my screen <clears throat> okay, hope my screen is visible to you. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, this is the drive where I am currently located. I have already shared with you the link. Uh, with you, the link of this particular folder, which is ggu underscore atal underscore CMS, and uh, it contains all the resources that uh, we discussed yesterday and uh, we'll be discussing uh, today. So let me get you started with the concept of regression. And uh, before that, we'll be discussing a little bit about pandas, how it can be used for creating data frames. And later on, we'll be saving that particular data frame to the disk in the form of a, a CSV file. And then on that particular CSV file, we'll be doing uh, some sort of regression analysis. And uh, we'll be understanding that what is the basic difference between regression and classification. So this is the agenda for today. Then we'll be discussing about Askelon package and the various machine learning models available with Askelon. Askelon is a very rich library for machine learning. And it comes with various packages for doing various stuff like you can do a uh, classification there are different types of classification models you can do a uh, cross validation uh, so there are packages for that you can uh, assess the performance of the uh, various models created and you can select the best one so maybe in this session and the uh, session which will follow just after that that will uh, that is on uh, k-fold validation so if you'll uh, come to know about uh, these basic concepts uh, uh, related to regression and the classification. Okay, <clears throat> so the first line of the code is to mount the uh, mount my Google Drive so that my collab can access it. So it is already mounted because I entered the code uh, just uh, you know few hours back. And now here we are using pandas library and uh, creating a data frame. So as I told you yesterday, a data frame is just a, a kind of a two dimensional representation, two dimensional uh, relation or kind of table. So here we are creating a data frame and uh, year, month, uh, rate of interest, unemployment and stock index prices. So these are going to be the columns in my data frame. And what is this problem? Let me explain you. So today we are going to do multilinear regression. And what is regression? Regression is just to, you are having some dependent variables and some one dependent uh, variable and uh, many or just one uh, independent variable. And you try to find out a uh, correlation uh, between you know uh, them like uh, if you just look at the simplest form of regression that that is linear regression and uh, we try to fit a line which is in the form of y equals to mx plus c so there are different values uh, of y and there are different values of x we try to find out a correlation between these two that how y is dependent on x 
and uh, what is the best line that can uh, describe this relationship so any regression model basically tries to find out the value of m and the value of c uh, called as the, uh, the the coefficient uh, or the slope or and the intercept so this is the basic agenda for uh, for uh, any regression and since regression is a very you know very uh, vast topic there are even dozens of types of regression including linear logistic ridge lasso polynomial bayesian so there are different types of so there are different types of regression models so what we are uh, trying to create we are just creating a data frame here our data is into this data frame so these are the uh, four or five uh, columns the five columns in the uh, in the data frame please view <laughs> okay, please, please mute. Okay, Amit Vishwakarmaji, thank you for muting yourself. All right. So these are the five different columns like year, month, and then there is interest rate, unemployment rate, and stock index price. So what uh, we'll be doing here, we'll be trying to establish the relationship between this uh, dependent variable, which is stock index price, and we'll be finding that how it is correlated with the, uh, you know, this, uh, sorry, how it is related with interest rate and unemployment rate. So there are different values uh, given for interest rate and for unemployment rate. And we'll be trying to establish a multi-linear uh, relationship with the, you know, this variable uh, is stock index price. So <clears throat> this is some, you know, data that I've capped here. And uh, if I try to execute, uh, you know, this particular line after converting it into a data frame. So uh, these are the values that you get as a result. So the index is automatically included uh, in any data frame. And uh, here are the five different uh, columns that I've created. So year, so this data is of 2017 and 2016, and there are different months related to a given year. And this is the interest rate, this is the unemployment rate, and this is the stock index price uh, for that particular month in a given year. And we have to find a linear relationship uh, between these you know, three variables. So how stock index price is going to be dependent on interest rate and uh, unemployment rate. So <clears throat> that is the objective here. Okay. So, so, so sorry to interrupt. I mean, could yes, you yes. share this piece of code? I mean, this piece of data so that you can do it parallelly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is available in this particular, uh, you know, the folder that I shared with you. And if you want, I can share the link again. And this particular file is available with regression.ipynb. So do you have the access to the uh, drive link that I shared yesterday? It is the same. I'm just doing it again. Let me check. Let me check. OK. So link is there on your FDP group. You just click there and you will have access to. Thank FDP, you, sir. Uh, that I, uh, are you able to access it? And there is a file with name, this regression.ipynb. So this is the file. And uh, the data is already there. So uh, the data I'm creating uh, from my program itself, you will not find it uh, anywhere in the form of CSV. So it is something that is going to be saved. So this is about data, uh, you know, uh, the, the data set uh, that I have created with the help of, you know, one data frame. It is having five columns. Okay, let me now create one CSV file out of this data. 
so that you can understand that how pandas can be used for writing to a file and uh, how it can be used for exporting the data so okay in the next uh, step what we are doing that currently i am logged into a virtual machine in the google colab and by default my root directory is this this content but i what i need to do i need to reach to this particular you know uh, folder so that i can directly read and write without providing the entire path <coughs> so alternatively what you can do you provide the fully qualified path and then you can read and write but this is something that how os package can be used for changing your uh, the current working uh, directory location so if you just get the the current working directory with, with uh, before executing this statement okay so let me execute this okay so it is already uh, mounted uh, with this since uh, this a uh, file was just recently opened but if you execute this particular import os and then os dot get cwd then it will point you to this uh, root uh, uh, root folder and that is content but your data is stored or you want to store the data uh, in this uh, particular ggu underscore atal underscore cms so what you need to do you need to change the uh, the change the current working directory so for that what you can do you can call one function of os and that function is os.chdir so you are providing here the path of uh, this particular you know folder which is content drive my drive and ggu_atal_cms so here the folder name may be different and the location may be different so you just need to change the current working directory so can you can directly access the data otherwise you need to provide the complete path when you are reading or writing uh, from the uh, from your drive okay so uh, this is already uh, pointing to this particular uh, you know uh, uh, directory and that is ggu_atal and underscore cms and what i am doing i am just deleting this file from you know this particular location stock.csv okay so it is removed and then i'll be seeing whether i can write it back to this location or not <coughs> okay so uh, i have executed this now there is a function that can be called on any data frame and that is 2_csv so this particular function can you know write your data frame in the form of uh, this uh, a csv and there are other functions for other extensions as well you can explore it that what are the you know other functions that data frame can be written to so just execute this and if it is successful then it will okay let me just refresh it okay so stock.csv uh, has been written back and uh, now you can see that what is there inside this stock.csv so it will be a comma separated uh, you know file so you can export it and key, can see its content or you can use the <coughs> text editor which is available as part of uh, you know uh, the uh, google uh, drive app so here this particular data has been written so there are five different uh, Uh, columns and this is the data corresponding to every column and uh, here i am using one uh, you know a small thing that is i am making this index equals to five false if you do not make it false then it will write one more you know by default uh, uh, column so if you eliminate it and try to rewrite the data okay so let's open it and see what is there okay what i would suggest that you download this entire folder and uh, 
uh, upload it it is just a few i think mb or something like that so that you can get access to this so i think mr amit srivastava is uh, working on this drive itself do not try to work on this drive i have shared it uh, you know so that you can edit it but it will corrupt the rest of the data okay so download this particular folder and then upload it uh, in your drive okay so this is the default uh, you know if i just made the index equals to false or i if if i if i did not uh, you know uh, do it so by default it will take the index so when it is taking index then it is adding one more column so here there is no uh, you know caption for this column but there are indexes starting from zero and going till last but you do not want uh, this to happen so in that case what you will have to do you will have to make here when you are writing index equals to false so that the index is not written to your file <coughs> okay so one csv file has been created and uh, that is just having five different columns and the file is written back to your drive and that is in the form of stock.csv so this is our own data set that we have just uh, created out of the data frame all right so what we are doing now we are reading back this particular stock.csv the entire data is already available with us but we are just writing the file and reading trying to read it back and then we'll see that what contains what is there inside that particular data frame so one data frame has been created uh here and uh, let's just see that how it looks so it is having five different uh, columns and we are displaying it back something that we did uh, yesterday as well if you want to perform various other operations like if you just, just want to get the first five or uh, uh, last five rows then we have had and uh, fail functions and uh, we have another function that is the statistics so you can call describe function and can get the statistical overview of this uh, you know data set so we can use describe <coughs> and it will give you some statistical you know perspective of the data that uh, how many total number of records are there in the data uh, data set what is the mean what is the standard deviation what are the uh, uh, first second and third quartiles and uh, how the data looks like so it will do that uh, sort of uh, analysis okay but what we are supposed to do uh, will train a uh, multi linear regression model so why i am calling this multi linear regression model because our dependent variable will be dependent on more than one variable so the simplest case is just uh, you are having one dependent variable and one independent variable and you are just trying to figure out a best uh, fitting line that is in the form of y equals to mx plus c and what regression algorithm will do it will try to figure out that what is the best possible m and what is the best uh, possible c and it will try to uh, do some optimization based on the uh, the sum of the squares of the distances from that particular line so <laughs> there are different techniques to optimize that and uh, you tend to uh, you know uh, minimize the distance from that particular line so if it is just a linear regression if it is multi regression uh, if if there are multiple dependent variables then it can be a plane or it can be something else depending on the dimension of the data okay so uh, when we can find regression first we need to uh, be sure that whatever uh, you know relationship or whatever uh, dependent and uh, independent variables we have they should exist a linearity or they should exist a linear relationship between them so that is something we can visualize and uh, <coughs> we are trying to draw the plot that whether interest rate is, is somehow uh, linearly related with the stock index price and whether the unemployment rate is linearly depend uh, is linearly uh, you know uh, 
related with the stock index price so these are the two things that we can see by visualization so uh, you would have got an idea for various visualization libraries uh, the matplotlib is the the basic one then there is seabone and uh, bokeh and plotly and various other you know visualization libraries because visualization is very very powerful and it can it can communicate uh, some of the pieces of information that even the models fail to you know tell so <clears throat> this is an integral part of the data science so we are just trying to visualize whether there is a linear relationship uh, existing between this this inter this uh, stock index price and the interest rate so we are plotting a scatter uh, you know a kind of plot for that so here on the x axis there is interest rate and uh, there is a stock price on the y and here you can see that when the interest rate uh, <coughs> is increasing then the stock index price is also somewhat increasing so there is a kind of uh, linear relationship or there is kind of you know correlation existing between these two variables and uh, so uh, this is a good uh, you know this is something a good uh, thing to go ahead to find out a linear a linear uh, regression model between these two variables so uh, this is suppose there are multiple columns in your in your data set but not every column may be you know that useful so that is something a kind of heuristic or kind of you know hit and try or kind of understanding or uh, uh, kind of prudence that uh, a data science scientist can apply that which columns are going to be helpful for creating a model like uh, yesterday we saw uh, a data set of titanic and then we saw that some of the models uh, we we did not find uh, you know carrying any value so that's why we dropped some of the columns we we changed some of the columns we filled some of the missing data so in the same way for for regression also you can find out that what type of linear relationships exist which uh, column may be dependent on what column so this is something that you need to <coughs> you know understand that there are various ways and means that can help you out and visualization is one of them so here we have established that uh, we are good to go with the uh, stock index price and uh, interest rate both have some some sort of uh, linearity uh, between them and in the same way we can just try to figure out whether there is a, a linearity existing between unemployment rate and the stock index price so yeah as the unemployment rate is increasing so people have less money and they tend to you know <coughs> tend to uh, invest a little so that definitely there is a kind of uh, you know trend which is uh, bearish and uh, that will cause the stock index price to fall so there is a kind of inverse relationship between these two that uh, when the unemployment rate is increasing the the stock price is also uh, is stock prices decreasing so <clears throat> this is a again a kind of linearity and that is existing between these two you know uh, these two variables one is stock price and unemployment rate so out of these two visualization we can conclude that stock price is Uh, dependent on unemployment rate as well as it is dependent on interest rate okay that's great so what we can do now we can try to uh, create a linear regression model a kind of multi linear regression model because the linear regression in its uh, simplest form is when uh, there is one dependent variable and there is one uh, independent variable and we are trying to fit a line which is in the form of y equals to mx plus c but here we have got two <coughs> independent variables one is the unemployment rate and the another one uh, happens to be yeah this one the rate of interest so uh, uh, so there are two ways in which we can create a regression model so the api 
or the uh, or the tools are available in two different packages one is scalon and another one is stat models <clears throat> so stat model uh, you know takes a root or kind of uh, describes the model in 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 somewhat uh, which is more you know uh, lucid or which can uh, Uh, convey information to the statistician so it will contain various you know things that uh, generally statisticians can understand but if you are a computer scientist and you are just interested in uh, seeing that what is the intercept and what are the different coefficients <coughs> for different uh, uh, different independent uh, variables so if you just want to see that then you can learn you can use sklearn which is scikit learn a, a very very powerful machine learning library of python and it comes with everything that you need for machine learning so we'll be seeing both of these approaches that how to use stat models and uh, how to use sklearn for doing this multi uh, linear regression okay so uh, here in the in this particular cell in the first line i have imported sklearn and from sklearn i am importing this uh, this sub package which is linear underscore model and uh, that contains the linear regression uh, you know function so i'll be creating i'll be instantiating linear regression later on for uh, for creating an object or kind of instance of this linear regression okay <laughs> so now i need to divide my data into two parts the x and y so x will be kind of feature or feature set which will be containing two columns from the data frame interest rate and unemployment rate and uh, then there is another one is stock index price so this will be a two dimensional uh, you know a kind of array that i'll be you know creating a data frame coming out from this particular data frame <coughs> and uh, it is just giving me two uh, columns the interest rate and unemployment rate and that i am placing in a variable called as x i am keeping the output or my kind of target so that is the stock index price and i need to establish a a linearity between these two so it will be in the form of uh, stock price equals to m1 into interest rate plus m2 into unemployment rate plus c so m1 and m2 are going to be the coefficients or the uh, of a, of a kind of values and c will act as the intercept and uh, there will be a plane instead of a line so that is the basic objective here i have divided my data set into two parts x and y x is containing the the features and y is containing the target or the value that i want to get here okay <clears throat> so i am creating a, a regression model so for that i need to instantiate this particular linear regression which is available in linear underscore model uh, sub package okay so one instance of this is created in the regr so it is regression now fit so this the particular fit function is kind of universal it is used whether you are using machine learning you are using any type of model even in deep learning also uh, uh, even when you are using keras library so you can call this particular fit function and uh, fit function may have various parameters based on the problem that uh, you are solving and uh, so uh, what uh, we are passing here so we are passing the features which is containing these two columns and uh, corresponding output so this is a kind of supervised learning where the model will be looking at the examples and will try to fit a a, a plane a to, to 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 segregate or to fit the data that you are uh, you know uh, that you are having in the form of x and y okay so once this particular model is fit the training is completed then what is the output of this regression so uh, the model tries to learn these two things one is intercept and another one is the coefficient so intercept is just uh, when the line is in the form of y equals to mx plus c so the c is the intercept and the coefficient is the uh, 
uh, the, the M part, but here we are creating a multilinear model. So there will be uh, uh, two coefficients. One is what to be multiplied with unemployment rate and another one is to be multiplied with interest rate. But, but this is something that you get as the result of this. And uh, these are the <coughs> two, uh, you know, uh, the two metadata that uh, you get after the training. Okay, so once you get it, then uh, you can see that, uh, so these two values are very, very important. And once you get these two values, then you can predict uh, the you, you can predict the value of dependent variable based on these coefficients and one uh, you know one set of values that you provide so once we have got these two values and uh, if we try to enter a new value and want to predict that uh, what the stock price is going based on the interest rate of 2.75 and uh, unemployment rate of 5.3 then you will get the prediction for that so once i execute it I'll get some output. The first one is the intercept part. So the value of the intercept on the data is 1798 uh, point uh, something. And I'm getting here two coefficient. One is for unemployment rate and another one is for interest rate. So these are the two coefficients that I'm getting and total there are three values uh, that I'm getting. And uh, the predicted value, so based on these values, uh, you'll, be, you'll be getting this you know particular value so uh, you just need to multiply the first one 2.75 with this particular value and uh, unemployment rate with this particular value and just add this value to uh, these two values and whatever you'll get you'll uh, that will be the predicted value so that is very simple to understand that uh, what it is doing and uh, how it is doing any question so far any and anything you want to ask. Did you get it? The idea of regression? Yes, sir, get it. Okay. Is there any question you want to ask anybody? Uh, excuse me, sir. Um, sir, it is a Nida from Madagascar. Sir, uh, may I ask you only one thing? Yeah, uh, please. Uh, uh, if I want to detect the object and which uh, object depend on the multiple uh, factors, so that time we are using a multiple regression. Uh, so sorry, what do you want to detect an object? So suppose uh, I, I wish to uh, find the uh, water object. You know? So there is a multiple object as collided the mud and all. So <coughs> and that's why I in that case, I uh, even prefer to multiple regression. Uh, yes, uh, means you are uh, you want to detect an object from an image or what type of data is that? Is there satellite data. Satellite existing data. between these two? Sat uh, satellite data, sir. Okay, satellite data. So that will be a kind of image data or yes. in the form of something else? Yes, sir, image of data. Yes, sir. Okay, so from images, you want to locate... Uh, that where a particular category of object is existing, if it is pr uh, present in the image. Is that the thing? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, for that, uh, there may exist various, uh, you know, uh, techniques for doing that. And uh, I think you can even apply deep learning and uh, multi-level classification where you get the prediction for a bounding box corresponding to an object so you can do that and uh, uh, you can apply even the regression as well and uh, there are variants of the regression that can be you know used as the classifier so we'll be okay. discussing shortly uh, you know one logistic regression which CNN has and CNN all. Sorry, yeah, yeah. CNN, CNN, uh, yeah 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 you can use okay. cnn for that SCN for utilization of that yeah yeah so they can model, you know? yeah 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 Sir, uh, sir, uh, uh, it is a possible. Uh, can you uh, can you explain the and after after can you explain the how to work of object object detection for these algorithm? It is a possible in in this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. There are two other sessions that I'll be taking on, especially on deep learning. So there will be talking about in detail that how it can be done, and uh, 
what you can do you train your model so that object detection is you know very simple so for that you'll have to use uh, some a couple of other libraries like opencv can help you in that so if you are having multiple even the classifiers that you have trained then uh, you are capturing uh, you know uh, loading an image and uh, these are countries are also available in your fdp na sir yeah the open cv part will be uh, will not be covering here but i'll be telling you that how you can use uh, cnn how you can use yes, sir. you know the uh, rnn and lstm and uh, yes, sir. how you can even create your own data set for classification for image classification fine sir fine sir uh, if if i have suffering any problem in the regarding the coding so can can i call you if you is don't mind yeah yeah sir uh, please please give me your number sir yeah i'll be i'm i'm added to the group you can take it from uh, you know that group and uh, i'll be sharing my email id as well so we can get connected okay so okay, uh, so uh, we'll be discussing the image classification the deep learning stuff and uh, you know all of that how to create our own data set how to train it how to get the predictions yes, which model is best yes, sir, uh, suited yes, how to I'm overcome sir. yeah yeah how to yes, overcome thank you, sir, thank overfitting you, so there are uh, many things but there is a you know a step by step procedure for understanding that and I, right I, now we are I, discussing I, regression will be discussing yes. it okay so any uh, doubt uh, any uh, question uh, related to regression so i hope you got the basic idea what is regression so regression is just uh, there are certain Uh, uh you know independent variables and there is one dependent variable you are trying to find out the relationship between uh, the dependent and the independent uh, variables and for that we have various techniques of regression i think more than dozen uh, of the techniques exist like there is linear regression uh, there is logistic regression that can be even used as a classifier there is ridge regression and there is lasso polynomial bayesian so there are different types of regressions they can they come up with the, you know their <coughs> own limitations own you know own assumptions and then you, that that you can use for doing various stuff so it is very much used for predictive modeling you are creating a model and then you are predicting and uh, you know doing some sort of uh, the some sort of output based on uh, you know th that trained model and as i told you that there are two paths so there are two parallel ways uh, that uh, in which you can uh, you know implement a, a simple regression model so one is with the help of scikit-la <coughs> that we have just seen the same thing you can do with stat model so there is a stat models library available with python that can be used for regression and there are you know it gives you many useful statistical uh, pieces of information that may be helpful in understanding your data well and if you are a statistician then you can understand you know some of the jargons related to that otherwise you can explore that uh, what is the output that is coming from the <coughs> as the output of that stat models but both give you the same thing they try to predict the coefficient and the intercept of, of the line or the plane that you are trying to fit so here what we are doing so this uh, we need to import a package called as stat models and from that we are importing the sub package api and we are creating an alias or trying to rename this particular you know stuff with sm as we do import pandas as pd and numpy as np and uh, then we are trying to add this constant so this is uh, the, these are our <coughs> independent variables and uh, what we are doing we are trying to create a function from stat models and that is ols ols stands for ordinary least square so this is a kind of optimization technique which is trying to find a, a line or a plane so whatever points are there which are on the line or which are out of the line so there can be multiple lines or multiple planes that can fit to to a data but you will try to find out the optimal plane or optimal line so how to decide the optimality criterion so for that you can use uh, you <coughs> the squares of the distances and you add that particular value 
and then you try to minimize it. So just like uh, as we do in support vector machines, where we try to minimize the, you know, maximize the difference from the hyperplane. So here we are trying to minimize the distance of various points from the from the regression line of the plane. And uh, so the fit function is being used. Just there is a difference that here we are explicitly calling this OLS, which is ordinary least uh, square. You can read about it uh, from the doc string in more detail that how it works and uh, uh, what are the different parameters that you can pass to customize it. Okay, once we train this uh, model, then we can use it for prediction. And uh, <clears throat> the predictions that we are getting will be saved you know in this prediction variable and then we can print uh, you know the different statistics uh, coming out of this so once you run this then you get a very very exhaustive you know regression results and uh, uh, some of the terms only statisticians can understand that what each of these values uh, mean like what is R squared, what is adjusted R, R squared, what significance it is having, what F statistic is, what is AIC, what is BIC, but what is of common interest, that is something which is coming, uh, you know, out of here. And this particular part is giving us the same value as we got uh, from the uh, from the ASCII-LUN. So we are getting these coefficients, the constant is this one, which is the intercept. And the coefficient, which is which will be multiplied with interest rate, is three forty five point five four zero one, and the unemployment rate is something this. So it is using uh, a kind of a different approach, but it is trying to figure out the 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 the, the similar things. And apart from these constants and coefficients, it is also giving you giving you some of the statistical insights about. Uh, about the regression model that has been just trained. So if you want to read about them, then some of the terminologies have been listed here that what R squared is, what adjusted R squared is, what F statistic is, what AIC is, is stands for, what BIC stands for. You can explore it and you can, you know, uh, if you are into this, if you want to take this regression model for research, then you can explore it further. But this is somewhat and uh, a kind of overview that how you can fit, you know, one simple regression model, how you can use pandas for saving, uh, uh, saving a data frame in a CSV file, and then we can load back the CSV file, and then we get the results uh, of the regression. So what is the regression? What is the meaning of regression? The regression is just trying to establish the linearity between a uh, independent uh, between a dependent variable and uh, uh, one or more uh, independent variables. And uh, so if you have any question, you may ask. I hope you got this basic idea of uh, regression and uh, further you can explore various other types of regressions that I've told you and uh, how each of these regressions can be used like well, logistic regression, the output of logistic regression is a discrete value. So instead of getting continuous values, you'll get the discrete values uh, like you, you'll get zero or one. So logistic regression is regression, but you can also use it as classification, uh, you know, technique because you are getting some discrete values and those discrete values may correspond to the different class levels. Uh, you can even use ridge regression when uh, there is a high correlation between the independent uh, variables. So there may be a situation that uh, you are trying to establish the relationship between this pre predicted uh, stock price and the rate of unemployment and rate of interest. But somehow there is a collinearity existing between uh, rate of interest and uh, the unemployment rate. So for that, <coughs> The, the the basic linear models may not uh, work well, and uh, the ridge regression can be used for, uh, for 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 such scenarios where there is multi collinear data and there is a collinearity existing among the uh, among the independent variables as well. And uh, the lasso regression uh, comes with uh, regularization and uh, the feature selection. So 
uh, you can overcome regularization we frequently used in machine learning for overcoming the problem of overfitting that we do not want our model to you know overfit or kind of memorize the <coughs> training data so you'll get the better performance on the training data uh, and even on the validation data but when you are testing it when the model is getting some unseen uh, real world data then it is not performing that that good so regular like regularization is uh, you know used there even in deep learning we use regularization layers to overcome uh, you know that particular problem there are different levels of regular regularization regularization that you can use and uh, yeah lasso regression is uh, uh, comes with this regu uh, regularization and the feature selection and even they may exist the uh kind of polynomial uh, you know relationship so instead of just having a relationship of like this y equals to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 plus c they can exist even a polynomial relationship like y equals to m1 x square plus m2 x cube and something like that so for that these linear regression techniques cannot uh, you know work well and uh, you'll have to go to something which is called polynomial regression and uh, yeah you can use other concepts as well uh, in this regression like bayes theorem can play a role uh, in uh, creating these uh, regression models so ba uh, bayesian linear regression model also exists so that works on conditional probability and uh, some similar concepts so it is a big topic you can use it for you know uh, for solving various kind of problem and depending on the nature of the data and the kind of relationships whether there is a multi collinearity existing in your data the data is uh, having the relationships which are not linear but the polynomial so you can come up with different types of uh, regression models but this is something uh, that is very very basic and the to get you started with that you you have two options either you can follow the path of askelon or you can follow the path uh, of stat models both are the because the beauty of the python is that that you get multiple options for doing the same stuff uh, so so you can choose any of the paths and there is a high redundancy of the functionality like uh, uh, for even for visualization you saw that uh, for plotting the same you know type of plots for plotting box plot you you have various options even pandas library can provide you the plotting functionality you can use matplotlib and uh, then pyplot from that particular uh, package you can use cbone you can use you know other libraries uh, for doing the same stuff so it is up to your choice that what you use and uh, there is a rich library available for that okay so if there is any question then you you may ask otherwise we are moving to the next thing and that is the classification and how we can use various machine learning approaches for performing the binary as well as multi class classification and what are the some of the concepts that you we need to understand which are common across all the tasks okay so should we move to the classification all right yes sir so <clears throat> so in the same folder uh, you'll get another file which is classification.ipynb just open it okay so uh, here we'll be looking at different uh, you know uh, classifiers available as part of askelon so there are dedicated sub packages uh, in the askelon like for if you want to uh, implement support vector machines as the classifier then there is svm package if you want to use knn classifier then there is neighbors uh, package if you want to uh, you know access the decision tree classifier then there is tree sub package if you want to use uh, linear discriminant analysis that can be used for dimensionality reduction as well as for uh, classification then there is discriminant analysis uh, sub package available if you want to work with night based classifier so there is night based package available and gaussian nb is the you know classifier that you can use so uh, 
all right so today we'll be understanding the basic concepts that how the classification can be performed on a given data set and uh, yeah so uh, the first line is from uh, i'm just mounting it this particular to my uh, to my uh, google drive this particular colab file with my google drive it is already mounted okay so here i am importing some of the libraries and uh, why this data science is daunting Sir, not 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 display. hello A screen not so okay screen is not visible no sir yes sir yes okay. sir is it visible or not not sir it's visible only sir visible sir this is visible eh? yes sir okay so uh, i think please check your uh, you know uh, connectivity or something like that because if it is visible no. yeah is there anything i can do no sir thank you okay so <clears throat> so why this data science is daunting and why this you know uh, learning data science or machine learning the curve of that learning is steep so that is because that uh, there is a little logic and there are you know lots of functions there are lots of libraries available and we tend to forget that Uh, basically which library to include what is the uh, what is the package what is the name of the function so what we can do and that, that is a genuine problem so you cannot recall everything unless and until you you know practice extensively but what you can do that you pick up a problem you try to solve it you understand the basic concepts when you get some of the challenges then you try to figure that out there is lots of support available in the form of uh you know different forums you will get something on you know kaggle you get uh, you'll get something on stack overflow related to your problem and then you when you come up with something concrete then you understand with most of the concepts and the code is available uh, everywhere so that is not the problem books are available tutorials are available moocs are available but we need to understand the basic concepts that how something is happening and what is something you know uh, that uh, 60% which is common across all the problems so we are going to discuss uh, that 60% which is common across all the problems when you do something so <clears throat> today we'll be using classification uh, for our you know for multi class classification problem as well as the uh, the binary classification problem okay so there is something which is uh, you know a kind of universal in this world of machine learning that whenever you want to train your model uh you want to train one machine learning model so the first thing is that that your data should be in the numerical uh, format so any machine learning uh, you know uh, algorithm cannot work on uh, something else apart from the numerical values so when you are using even these traditional machine learning like uh, knn svm decision tree lda naive based so each and every algorithm expects the data to be in the numerical format so what you can do if your the data is in the form of images and you want to train it so and if it is in the form of suppose uh, some speech data and you want to perform classification or there are text documents you want to perform classification or some sort of uh, you know predictive modeling for that so uh, for that you may require one step that is called uh, feature selection or kind of feature extraction and there are various ways depending on the data that you are working on so if you are working on text data then there are different embeddings available that will convert your you know uh, your text into something which is you know word vector or that will give you some numerical representation of your data converting images is somewhat you know easier task because images are just the uh, just the matrices uh, where the values are the pixel intensities so you can uh, do uh, you use the pixel intensities as the features or you can extract some of the features like for binary classification for face detection Uh, we use viola jones classifier which uses har like features and uh, those have similarities related to the har wavelets so somewhat something that you need to do that is feature extraction 
and uh, the deep learning overcomes uh, this particular problem because deep learning provides you something which is called end to end learning so you provide your data there are different layers apis available to do the feature extraction part so even if you are working with you know tax data so you can have one embedding layer so that will convert your tax data into some numerical representation for uh, images you do not have to worry because automatically the neurons extract features and they can do that so so this is something that you need to you know think of before uh, doing that what type of data is there whether i i need to do some uh, you know feature extraction and how i can convert data into some numerical representation if there are some categorical attributes then you need to even convert them into some numerical representations and uh, there are various Uh, you know steps related to the pre processing like standardization of the data may be required normalization of the data may be required binarization of the data may be required so there are different techniques i'll share you some of the resources because covering everything is not possible uh, in the constraint uh, time so uh, let's get started here what uh, type of packages we are going to use so we are importing something you know some small pieces from this sklearn package so i'll be using this svc so svc support vector classifier and there is a package for svc that is svm so svc is the you know classifier and svm is the package so here uh, it will be used as a function and it will be used as a uh, Uh, the kind of folder to contain this particular function or there is a module with this particular name and if i want to use knn so the name for knn classifier is k neighbors classifier and we need to you know mind that how it is to be written and the neighbors is is spelled in american way of uh, you know spelling so it is not o u r it is o r s classifier and for decision tree classifier if you want to apply decision tree classifier then there is tree uh, package inside uh, sklearn and then decision tree classifier is the you know name of the module that can be used for this particular uh, for creating a decision tree classifier for lda we have linear discriminant analysis so discriminant underscore analysis is the uh, sub package from where we need to import this and this is gaussian naive bayes Uh, which is for naive bayes classifier uh, which works on conditionality of the probability uh, so 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 we are importing some of the packages you can uh, you know uh, look for an algorithm that uh, this is the algorithm that i want to apply so what is the corresponding package for that and what is the name of the module that i need to uh, call so uh, we'll be using this pandas that uh, we have already you know uh, seen how to use that so i am importing pandas as pd and uh, what we are doing uh, will be splitting our entire data set into two parts and that is the training and testing part and that can be done with some sort of you know random sampling and for that we have this function train underscore test underscore split so it will do uh, the splitting of our data set into training and testing it will not just Uh, do a kind of random sampling, and for that the package that we use is model underscore selection, and this particular package is very very important. It contains the methods for uh, stratified k-fold and uh, for validation score, so you can use it uh, you know frequently for doing uh, that sort that sort of stuff. All right, so the data set that uh, we'll be using today is Iris. flars data set so this is again in the form of csv file and let's just have a look at the data set which is available in this uh, folder here iris csv and let's see what this data set contains okay so it is just containing some uh, you know some numerical values and uh, one categorical value so these there are total five columns in this data set and these the 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 the, the headings are missing from this data set uh, the the column names are not included here and these are the five different attributes and uh, three types of iris flowers uh, the the three varieties of iris flowers are there 
and their four attributes have been you know mentioned here so there is petal length petal width sepal length and uh, sepal width so first one is sepal length then sepal width and then there is petal length and petal width so there is iris flower there are three varieties of you know iris flowers here one variety is iris setosa another variety is iris uh, versi color and the third variety is iris virginica so uh, total 150 rows exist in this data set and there are five columns the starting four columns are the features so this is already something we we know and this is the class level so there are three class levels and uh, we'll train a classifier on this and uh, we'll see that how the model can predict and how well it can perform so these are the four different attributes the petal length the sepal length means jo iris flower ka jo pauda hai uski uski lambai us paude ki sepal uh, the this the sepal width that how wide it is and the petal length the the leaf that it is having that uh, uh, means the the, the 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 flower petal so all right so that is something uh, we are going to uh, do so this is about this data set okay now since the names of the columns are not available so what we are doing we are manually creating a list of those names sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and this is the class level and uh, while reading this data set we are manually assigning them separately so this uh, uh, this data set uh, that we are reading in this uh, pandas data frame that will automatically have these uh, headings so uh, this we understand that how to read a data set the data set of, uh, we have read into this uh, you know data frame and uh, if we want to just print the starting first rows of the data set then we can use head function we can see the statistical properties and uh, finally the shape of the data set so shape will give you the dimension of the data set and uh, uh, we can just have a look one by one that once we are loading this data set whether we are able to load it or not so this is the snapshot of the data set showing you 12 starting rows from the data set and then you can see the statistical description of the data set and then finally the shape that what are the dimensions of the data set so there are 150 rows and five columns in our data set all right so what we are going to do here uh, will be dividing our data set into features and the class levels so there are four attributes uh, or the or the columns or the features uh, that will be using for training and there is one class level and uh, uh, will be training our classifier based on that so what we are doing we are converting our data set into a numpy array because uh, in array we have you know uh, we have easier uh, uh, slicing of the data set and we can use just the starting and ending you know points from to get a part from the uh, from the data frame so here the values property will convert our data frame into into a numpy array and from numpy array we are extracting Uh, a portion from that particular array so what we are doing uh, there are two values separated with this comma and the left one tells uh, the rows so here we i just mentioned here the the column so it means all the rows so the we are talking about the entire data set but the second one is the column so we'll be just extracting the zeroth first second and third column so total starting four columns will be extracting and those four, four columns basically represent our features so this is just a kind of slicing from the uh, data set after converting it, it into a numpy array and finally we are getting the class levels so we want all the rows but we just want the fourth column so indexing starts from zero so fourth column will be representing our class levels and uh, yeah this is something that we are getting and if you want to see that what is basically in x and what is there in y so you can just get that value that uh, what we are getting in y 
so it will print that so these are just 150 class levels which have been stored in this y and uh, the x will be holding the starting four columns all right <clears throat> okay in next what we are doing, we are calling this function of model selection. So sklearn.model selection, and then there is a module called as train underscore test underscore split. So this is a kind of very magical you know, function that will give you uh, the division of your training data as well as the validation or the test data. So what will it do? It will keep 30% of the data for, for testing, and uh, it will use 70% of the data for training. So if you talk about uh, the 30% of uh, 150, so it will be 45 rows will be used for, for testing and remaining 105 rows will be used for training. And this is something which is very, very important that is random state. So uh, even NumPy has a function uh, numpy.random.seed. So if you want to, get your results to be reproducible. So what is the meaning of reproducibility of the results? Suppose you have trained a classifier, the data set is fixed, and you are getting an accuracy of suppose 95%. And uh, here you are doing a train and a test splitting. So if the train and test splitting has to be random, but uh, but when some other person will be performing the same you know experiment then he may end up with land up with uh, you know uh, with with different sets of training and test and the accuracy may vary so but if you want your accuracy to remain same like if you are executing the code you are getting the same accuracy i am executing the code i am also getting the same accuracy so you can do the pseudo randomization of the process it means there will be random numbers but every time the random numbers will be generated with the with a seed and uh, this is the way how the random numbers are generated uh, so every uh, every programming language has a function to generate random numbers and random numbers are somehow associated with the oscillations of the you know cpu and how the CPU cycles are oscillating based on those random numbers are generated. So here, what you have uh, kept here, you have seeded it to a variable six. And if you keep the same variable, so you will get the same set of random numbers and your accuracy will be almost same. So there may be a very, very slightly difference in the accuracy, but uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a random process and we are just trying to create it as the pseudo random means we are just making the uh, the random seed fixed so that you can get the reproducible results. And every time I'll be running this code, I'll be getting the same accuracy and that's for uh, making the results reproducible. So 30% of the data will be used for testing and 70% of the data will be used for training. And I have stored the return values of this particular function in four different variables. So x underscore train uh, is my training uh, data, so the x part That's of the training sir. data. And uh, yes, is sir, there sir, from here, sir. Yeah, yeah, please. Sir, sir, kindly explain more about the seed that random state is equal to six. Uh, let's say we write it here as four. <laughs> that doesn't matter, no? No, no, that matters. So uh, I'll be explaining it, uh, you know, in more details, and uh, I'll be just removing it, and then we'll be seeing that what happens if we do not uh, uh, do not include this random state, and what happens if I seed it to a different number. So these two things I'll be explaining. Okay, okay. but after a few so minutes, after, we have a similar thing like seed. Yes, uh, yes. In our yes. So uh, that is the part of NumPy. You have numpy.random.seed and uh, then you can, uh, you know, fix it for all the random processes in your program. Okay. But, but here we so are- So the result yeah. same? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. From both, you'll get the same result and uh, they are just dependent on this particular number. 
they are just dependent on this particular number because random numbers will be random when you are seeding it to the oscillations of the cpu and that's how the random numbers are generated but when you are seeding it to some fixed value so there will be some sort of you know logic that uh, it is just taking 1 3 4 5 6 and then 17 18 and 19 for testing and rest it will be taking for that so it will be just a kind of fixed series so the 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 values that it will be getting will be from a predictable series it means that, it means if you specify this random state as a fixed number yeah. it means same set of training and testing will be uh, taken every time when we every go time. for this execution. yes yes and, and why do we need it for reproducibility of the result so that okay. if you are executing it and the accuracy happens to be 95.33 then again if someone executes the same code he'll also get the same accuracy uh, so that it's not good for testing the actual performance of the model because uh, if it is doing for the same set of data then it is yes. for that set of data <coughs> but but that is just for the assessment of the algorithm that okay. if we want to if we want to you know uh, compare the performance of uh, two people on on some task then we need to have certain common uh, you know things so for okay. that we are providing them the common data so if i just want right. to assess two people and uh, if luckily mm -hmm. one gets the easier questions and the other gets the you know tough mm -hmm. questions so the person who is getting the tough examples or tough uh, you know sort of data he'll be learn he'd be learning less from that particular data because there are outliers in the data there are some of the you know uh, records that do not uh, fit and describe the nature of the data so so for keeping uh, the things uh, same we are we are doing this it may have pros and cons bo both both right, so right. thank you that your uh, your method actually gave the accuracy of 95 and if someone wants to validate it so he should have the reproducibility of the model and for reproducible results we can keep the random state as fixed otherwise for keeping it random you can just omit this particular uh, you know attribute from this uh, model or you do not have to seed it is it clear we can we can fix it for the best performance uh, uh, instances like uh, the cases where it has taken and those those data set which has given the best performance so that yes. can be taken as Yes, yes, you can do, but that will not be a you know very good practice because you want a generic model. You just do not want it to be you know performing on a specific set of values. You want a generic okay. model so that uh, uh, that can perform similarly on unseen values and unpredictable values. Right. Sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. So what we are getting here, the output is. X underscore T R, X underscore T, and Y underscore T R, and Y underscore T. So X underscore T R and Y underscore T R are the X's and Y's of uh, you know the training data that will be using for training the model, and X T and Y T uh, will be used for uh, testing the model or uh, to predict the, the the values, and then we'll will be checking that how accurate it, how accurately it performed. Okay. <laughs> so what we are doing here we are create, we can create different types of uh, you know machine learning algorithms so machine learning algorithms are just the instances of their uh, uh, their modules so there are different uh, you know functions existing and we can instantiate uh, 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 the the different types of machine learning models so here we are starting with the decision tree classifier and then we will we'll be seeing the other algorithms as well so what we are doing we are creating an instance of decision tree classifier and then creating a model so this particular variable which is an instance of decision tree classifier uh, will get instantiated and then we are calling this particular common function fit so this wherever you you are using machine learning this fit function will be you know used just like a universal uh, you know tool what it is accepting it is a super so here you need white training examples as well as means the features as well as corresponding class levels so you are feeding uh, the model that uh, what are the four different attributes of a flower and what is its corresponding 
class level so based on how uh, you know uh, a particular algorithm perform it will try to fit that particular model or it will try to fit that particular model uh, the, you know uh, try to learn from that particular data like if we talk about decision trees so decision trees have just the kind of if else uh, roots or the decision roots so it will try to figure out some uh, some 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 rules uh, from that particular data and uh, once it is finished with the training then the learning will be stored in this model and this model can be used for predicting the values so what uh, next we'll be doing we'll be predicting uh, you know the class levels on some uh, some data that we have not used for training so the x underscore tr is the feature set that we used for training and we also uh, uh, told the uh, the told the model that what are the corresponding class levels now we are predicting the class levels on this x underscore t so this is our testing data so i'll be just entering uh, the uh, the petal length petal width sepal length and sorry sepal length sepal width petal length and the petal width to the model and i'll be asking the model that tell me that what are the class levels uh, for that particular data so all those class levels will be stored in this pred variables so let's do it so since data is very you know small so it will just take a jiffy a moment uh, to predict that and uh, now we can see that what is there in the you know this uh, uh, this predict variable so i can print it or i can just write the name of the variable last in the cell or i can create a new cell after this because every time it will be performing training and uh, let's keep it aside so what this pred variable is given pred variable is returning 45 different class levels why 45 because my x underscore t the size of this uh, you know part is 45 because i am using 30% data for the testing and that is uh, stored in x underscore t so i entered uh, the the four different features corresponding to 45 different uh, you know rows for the model and i asked the model to predict its class levels okay so that was something i got but how accurate is that so pred is something uh, that i'm getting so i can just you know see print pred and uh, also print the value of y underscore p so i did not tell uh, the model the exact or the right class levels but i asked it just to predict <laughs> the 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 class levels on its own so i can see it that uh, the first set contains the actual class levels sorry the, the predicted ones and the second one contains the actual ones so here you can see that the the first class level was iris setosa so it is also predicting it as the you know iris setosa the second one was iris virginica it was correctly predicted iris setosa then iris setosa iris virginica so the model has trained uh, uh, you know uh, very well and there will be some you know differences there will be some misclassifications as well so this is something that we have so there is y underscore t Uh, which is uh, the actual class levels and there is predicted class levels that i've got through this uh, the prediction of the model now there are ways to assess the accuracy of the model like if there is multi class classification problem then you can just get the accuracy of the model uh, you can look at the confusion matrix uh, that you are getting from the model that uh, if there is some misclassification instances then how that misclassification uh, went uh, you can have recall you can have precision you can have f score so there are different uh, you know performance matrix uh, uh, matrix basically m e t r i c s so matrix means some of the uh, benchmarks some of the statistical terms that can describe the performance of the model but this performance has to be decided based on this that uh, uh, how many instances of the model were correctly uh, classified and how many were misclassified 
so the prediction you are getting on the training data uh, on the testing data so that is available in this pred variable okay what next next we are talking about some of the accuracy uh, you know uh, measures or some of the accuracy matrix uh, so there is confusion matrix confusion matrix is just uh, uh, a kind of uh, 2d array so uh, it is generally performed on multi class classification problem suppose there are n categories of the uh, objects or of the you know classes in your data and you want to get that how uh, how well the accuracy uh, is there so it will give you an idea uh, of that uh, uh, which class was misclassified in which other class so it will get you you know some idea about that in the form of matrix and it is uh, mostly performed for multi class classification problems then we have accuracy score if you just want to see that uh, how much accurate is the result uh, just in the form of percentage or the fraction of one that how much accurate it uh, performed then we have accuracy score uh, this matrix and then if you want to get a summary of the entire classification that what was the precision what was the recall what was the f score what was the uh, you know other <clears throat> Uh, performance matrix for for your classification then you can use this classification report okay so uh, but what you'll do you'll just pass uh, in these performance matrix two things the predicted uh, result and the actual results and based on that comparison they'll give you you know the, the different sort of uh, uh, the classification you know results okay so the model the accuracy of the model is 93.33% so it will be just in the fraction of 1 so it will be 0.933 and i want to get it in the form of percentage so i need to multiply it and then need to place percent sign uh, explicitly for that okay now what is the classification report so classification report is a kind of more exhaustive uh, representation of your results Uh, just like uh, uh, that we used stat models api for regression and we got to know about various uh, you know various things about uh, that particular regression in the same way what you get you get here the precision you get recall you get the f score and you get the support so uh, these are just the simple terms and you need to understand them and uh, the precision recall f score and support can be uh, the support is uh, you know very easy to calculate the precision and recall are just uh, can be calculated based on the false positive and false negatives and total you know uh, positive values so these are just the uh, ratios of those values you just uh, google it and uh, try to find out that how this precision is calculated how this recall is being calculated f score is just the harmonic uh, you know mean of precision and recall and uh, support is just uh, you know number of uh, number of samples which are uh, uh, which are representing a particular class the number of uh, samples okay so this is something you are getting as part of this classification report and that may be used uh, in your when you are reporting your results for a particular classification problem and uh, yeah you are also getting macro average weighted average and uh, you know other other things okay so the last one is our last one is the uh, is the confusion matrix so it will be a square matrix of n by n where is n is the number of classes so in the given example we had three classes so it will it will be a matrix of 3 by 3 if there are 10 classes it will be a matrix of 10 by 10 so depending on how many classes are there uh, it will create a square matrix of that and it gives you uh, you know a fair idea that how the classification was performing and uh, how the the instances or how the records of a particular class got classified so this is our class 1 it is our class 2 and it is our class 3 and uh, the columns will also be the classes so there is n1 n2 and n3 and uh, even on the columns there is n1 n2 and n3 for class 1 uh, there were 15 instances of the you know that particular class that you can even get from the support uh, you know column and that will just tell you the number of 
total instances of a particular class and uh, uh, for class 1 all the 15 instances of that particular class were classified uh, to correctly to that particular class and if you look at the you know second class so the second class was having total 18 uh, samples and out of those total 18 samples the 15 were correctly classified to class 2 but three got misclassified to class three. So this is something that uh, confusion matrix conveys to you. And uh, so here uh, for class three, there were 12 instances of class you know, three and all the 12 instances got correctly classified to the class three. So this is giving you a kind of fair idea that uh, how uh, the classification happens if there were some Instance of instances of misclassification, then how that misclassification went. And uh, from here, you can also get an idea of the accuracy that total, uh, if you just uh, sum it up uh, 15, 18, and 12, so there are total 45 instances. And out of those 45, three were misclassified. So if you just divide three by <coughs> 45, so, okay and you just multiply it so you'll get uh, the idea of the accuracy of the model so this confusion matrix is very very important uh, as far as this understanding the classification is uh, uh, you know the performance on the classification is considered okay so if you have any question you may ask otherwise i'll answer the question that if you change you know this uh, random state value, then what will happen? Will we get the different accuracy? Will we get the different results? Sir, it means that 6, 5, whatever random number we specify over there, it yeah. means based on that, it will keep selecting the, those values. Uh, yeah, alternatively, yeah. Or something like that with that gap, like gap of five, gap of six, or something. Yes, exactly. It will try to generate those random numbers, and uh, those random numbers will be sent to the split. So one index will be used, and those indices will be fixed. So that's right. why you get the same result. So right, even, right. If, even if you try to execute it, I think you'll also get ninety-three point three three. But if I eliminate that, then every time if you train your model, you'll get a different accuracy. Okay. 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 So, so it will create confusion or something. So <coughs> how this model is going to be? No, it, it is perform giving you that accuracy for a given uh, you know data set, and then you can compare it with other models. Like here in the model, what we used, we used decision tree classifier. Now, if we we'll, if right. let's uh, change it to a support vector machine and can right. see right. That, that how it is performing. So here we are, you know, we are just trying to find out the best classifier uh, out of the available options, and for that we need to have some common data. Uh, yes, you must train it with the same data set. Same data, because we are comparing the models. Right. Uh, to, to, to get some idea of that. So, thank you, sir. You I understand. Train, <laughs> yeah, you can train other models. So, suppose here you want to, you know, train SVC. So, <clears throat> you can instantiate this SVC and can fit uh, these values. So, let's try to see that how the accuracy is, uh, you know, different on this particular model. Okay, so you are getting the same value even from this SVC. Okay, let's try to change it uh, to KNN. Thank you. 
Okay, so here you are getting a different accuracy. The KNN is performing better than SVC and uh, decision tree classifier. It is giving you an accuracy of 97.77. But here, the data that you are feeding to the you know, classifier is pseudo random kind of, uh, it is randomly generated, but it is fixed. So uh, this is how you can, uh, you know, uh, see that how different classifiers are, 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 are working and that is not a big deal. There are, you know, different functions corresponding to different classifiers. You just need to have an idea of those functions and you can create different models and uh, even you can store the results that are that is coming from these models into a list or into a dictionary and later on you can compare that which is the best performing model sir one more question sir this is yeah. the last question sir uh, these different uh, they, these different models are performing differently in terms of accuracy but yeah. uh, for a given data set one is performing better than the other but why it is doing better than the other it is not explainable yeah, this is not ex explainable, and for that you need to understand the, uh, uh, the, the the working of a you know model because uh, these models are taking different routes of logic. The support vector classifier, support vector machine is trying to fit a plane that is trying to maximize the different uh, the distance of different points from that particular hyperplane. The KNN is working in a yes, different way. Of course. Yeah. Of course, the processes are different and they're, the way they, they are modeled are different. But why it is for a particular data, it is, uh, it is performing differently. For that particular data, uh, it is very difficult to explain. Yeah, it I is very, very difficult. And that's why the people are working in the field of explainable AI. Like what is happening because Nowadays, you know, uh, many of the uh, uh, machine learning algorithms and the deep learning, uh, uh, especially, they, they, they perform just like a black box. So what is happening, how the weights are getting updated, how the, the things are added. So there are tools to visualize that, but that is not, you know, kind of explicitly uh, something clear uh, that can tell that what happened uh, uh, during and why that variation was there. But you can have a kind of dry run of those algorithms. Like if it's, there is a decision tree, then you you know, understand that how the decision tree is there, and you can you you can try to fit certain rules uh, for the decision tree, and can see that how a particular uh, you know what type of model uh, would uh, would have been in the background. But that is not uh, you know clear and something some magic is happening, but a logic is there. Uh, that uh, how uh, support vector machine works. So there is a different logic for that. How NIBase classifier is working, there is a different logic for that. How uh, KNN is working, there is a different logic for that. And uh, for a given instance, uh, they are performing like that. <clears throat> okay, any other question? Okay, so now this particular data set is, you know, uh, uh, the entire resources are available here. And uh, what I suggest that there is this Titanic data set available and there is another data set which is pima-diabetes.csv. So these are a kind of, you know, binary classification problems. Uh, you try to uh, convert this code so that you can classify these particular data sets. So in Titanic data set, uh, we saw that uh, there were, uh, you know, 11 uh, features or 11 columns and uh, we were trying to fit or, or, or there was a class level in which we were, we were having uh, whether a particular passenger survived or uh, died. So you can train a model and uh, can split your data into two parts, training and test, and can see that uh, how it is performing of that particular data. Okay, so do this. Uh, the another example uh, for that you can try that is Pima uh, Indians diabetes data set. So there are eight total nine uh, columns in this particular data set, and uh, this is also a binary classification problem where based on eight attributes. Uh, 
you need to predict whether a person is going uh, to have diabetes in next 5 years or not so this particular the, the, the last class uh, the, the last attribute is the class level and that is either 1 or 0 so there are eight different attributes like the level of glucose so this is uh, especially for the females and uh, some of the attributes related to you know uh, then they related to their health and then there is a uh, class level which is onset of the diabetes whether the patient is going to have diabetes in next 5 years or not so this particular data set is available you just load it and uh, in the same way the first eight attributes will be used uh, as the features and the last attribute will be used as the as the class level and you can create a, a machine learning model based on different techniques and then compare that what is the accuracy of different techniques so do this it will make the concepts clear and it will have something uh, to to have your hands on the, the, the some some real problems you will understand these concepts better and then there is one uh, other you know interesting file that is related to data pre processing so since time is already you know getting over we won't be able to cover it but something you can just have an idea those people who want to uh no more about uh this uh, the, the 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 different pre processing steps that once you you know have some sort of data if you want to uh do some sort of pre processing so there are different pre processing steps like we have standardization we have normalization and we have binarization we need to convert sometimes our categorical features to the numerical values so there is encoding of the categorical features Uh, we can impute some of the missing values so these are some of the four five basic steps with some uh, and being performed on uh, you know simple uh, numpy array so try to understand this and uh, then uh, you know a model has been created based on this particular data how it is going to be trained and how the prediction can be you know done and this is about uh you know some of the performance matrix for for classification we have different set of performance measures for regression we have different uh, performance matrix like uh, uh, the mean is mean absolute error mean squared error r2 score clustering for clustering we have different matrix we have uh, clustering matrix adjusted rank index homogeneity v measure class validation so these are some of the you know jargons that you need to uh, know uh when you are exploring this field of uh, machine learning and data science and deep learning so i have two other sessions with you so in that i'll be talking about deep learning and uh, how to train your models how to create your own data set and some of the things related to that any question so this is the last call for question okay then we are calling it a session that's it thank you the... yeah yeah please thank you dr chandramani sharma sir for nice and informative session i hope now all participants have clear their concepts regarding practical implementation of machine learning regression and their classification as you have explained so nicely each thank you so much sir, for sharing your valuable knowledge with us dear participants now we will resume we are ending our morning session and now we will resume uh, for next session sharply at 3 pm you all are requested to your attendance